absolutely delighted to welcome to the show my next guest as co-founder and CEO of the Miriam Institute. Benjamin Anthony brings considerable experience and expertise to his position in the areas of policy-driven dialogue and debate about the state of Israel. When we first came to know each other, uh, Benjamin was scribing something called the New State Solution, which has perhaps been moved on somewhat since those heady days of trying to create peace in the Middle East before the Abraham Accords. He is a veteran of three Israeli-Arab wars, two in Gaza in 2012 and 2014, and in Lebanon in 2006. It's my pleasure to welcome you, Benjamin. Hello to you. Hi, Johnny. Nice to see you and thank you for having me. It's nice to see you and thank you very much. Can we talk first of all about the plight of the 137 hostages which remain there? Uh, it is not a conflict between the purpose of destroying Hamas, but the pressure upon Israel, both internally and externally, to pause the fighting to get those hostages out as time is running out each and every day for them, as we saw with the tragedy that the IDF killed three of their own hostages just the other day. Yes, John, and thank you very much for starting there. Just just the other day, I took a visit to Kibbutz, uh, to Kibbutz Nachaloz, and, um, sorry, to, to Otef Aza, to the area just surrounding the Gaza Strip, mm -hmm. to Kfar Aza specifically was the name of the Kibbutz, and it was there that 28, 29-year-old Yotam Chaim lived. And Yotam Chaim, I went to see the home, the home that he had inhabited, the home that he was building as a young adult there inside Nachaloz. And I was just appalled by the destruction that has taken place there. These homes of young men and women had been bombarded with bullets, machine gun fire by Hamas, these young men and women had then been smoked out of these homes as they sought refuge in the safe rooms of those small homes inside Kfar Aza, inside this kibbutz adjacent to the Gaza Strip. And when they ultimately came out of their homes, people like Yotam Chaim were then frog-marched into the Gaza Strip, held there for 70, 70 days. And then we got the awful news that Yotam and two other hostages had survived the dreadful ordeal of being taken captive by this horrific, horrendous, depraved terror organization that is Hamas, only to emerge and then tragically to be gunned down by members of the Israel Defense Forces. It's a consequence of the atrocities of Hamas, of course. It's also a catalyst for the raised and intensified voices of the family members of these hostages for the Israeli government to do everything possible to bring the hostages back alive and swiftly I happen to believe that the Israeli government is doing everything possible. But, of course, an impossible dynamic has been foisted upon the entire state of Israel by way of the murderous actions of Hamas and by the seizing of what was 240 members of our society into captivity and now around 130, 136 members of our society remaining in captivity. What country has to deal with such dilemmas? What country has to deal with such a dynamic other than Israel? The answer is no country. The Jewish state is the only one that has to face down these threats. And I just find it appalling and disgraceful that this, despite the fact that this quandary, this dilemma is unique to the Jewish state, every other state seems to feel that it is eminently qualified to tell us how we should resolve this issue. They never having faced anything approaching what is upon the shoulders of our leaders, our legislators, our young soldiers, our commanders, our division commanders, and our high-ranked security officials. Uh, a little bit of humility would be in order, and I'd like to see that being displayed by our friends, our allies, and dare I say it, even those who are sworn enemies of the State of Israel. With five wars having been fought against Hamas in Gaza since Israel unilaterally disengaged in 2005. It is probably fair to say, Benjamin, that Israel has shown restraint in its war. The idea that it had, in each of those wars, kicked the can into the future, but tragically, October the 7th has shown that actually no decisive war was fought and so therefore this terrible tragedy ensued. 
Benjamin, what is the answer this time? The total eradication of Hamas? And what about the, what the military call the collateral damage, the civilians that get killed alongside the terrorists? It doesn't translate on television very, very well, and so Israel needs to prosecute this war as quickly as possible for public opinion not to be turned completely against the Jewish state. Well, your question is very important, and, and I expect nothing from you other than insightful questions. I want to, to challenge a little bit of the premise, Johnny, which is the, the title given to these operations hitherto within the Gaza Strip, that being the title of war. In fact, Israel has not waged war against Hamas until this war, the Swords of Iron War against the Hamas terror organization that's currently underway. What we've done is we have waged varying degrees of military operations against the terror organization and also against Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is believed to be an even more sinister, potentially, an even more dangerous, an even more rabid organization that is dedicated towards the to the destruction of the Jewish people. We have launched operation after operation after operation, but we've never fought a war. Now we're fighting a war, and I have to say, I believe we're fighting as we ought to have fought from day one. The first time that rockets were fired towards the states of Israel, indiscriminately launched towards our citizenry and towards our civilians, the Israel Defense Forces, in my opinion, ought to have maneuvered with the singular goal of destroying toppling, dismantling, and wiping out Hamas. I think that it is justified for us to do so. I'm pleased that we're in the midst of doing that. Of course, I'm deeply saddened at the same time by the loss of life when it comes to the soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces, when it comes to the loss of life of our hostages. But I want to be frank, I'm not a government spokesperson. I'm not a spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces. My entire focus is on the loss of life of my people, the Israeli people, Jewish and non-Jewish alike. That's where my concern began following October the 7th, that atrocity that took place. And that's where my concern continues. And so I'm probably not the best advocate for what might be the best solution for finding peace at this time, because I think our top priority has to be to wage war. I believe we're doing it. And I believe that it has to be waged with a view to concluding it with the complete eradication of Hamas from the Gaza Strip. There can never rise again any terror organization that has even the daring to imagine carrying out such atrocities against the Jewish people as we saw carried out against us on October the 7th. So I'm afraid I'm not an advocate for peace. I actually believe we're in the midst of a very well-justified war, a war that was thrust upon us, for which we did not ask, that we did not seek, but with the help of God, we're going to win and win conclusively.